if you will remember a few years back, I, I did a message and gave you from a vision what God had showed me about the UFOs and what was going to begin to take place and ultimately what was going to happen uh, with that type of a thing. I told you then that they weren't of God and they're still not of God. I also told you that it's imperative that you, you begin to understand what's taking place, that, that, that Satan, as the Lord Jesus said, cometh and he deceives the whole earth. He's deceived the whole earth. And as I, uh, a few years ago, and I'm not sure how many years ago that was uh, uh, now, but I begin to, to tell you that there's going to have to be a way in which devised by the powers of darkness and okayed by God, because nothing comes to us except first comes to the hands of the Father, but there's has to be, there has to be a way in which darkness is going to be able to deceive the whole earth. And what better way would it be than for one of these UFOs to land and it to get out and uh, to the whole world that they are sent by God, from God, and that what we've had here has been religion, but they know the facts and they're going to set it all straight and there's but one God and he was the God of the Hindu and the God of... And he's going to go through all that. Well, there wasn't many weeks after that until um, uh, somebody brought me a tape and, and there had been a, some sort of a seminar with a number of thousand people, thousands of people, I think it was in Las Vegas it was held, and they began to show uh, slides and have pictures of UFOs and, and, and that, that they had taken and even of the alien beings that were on board. And that's what we're going to deal with over the next, um, I don't know if I can get it done tonight, I don't think so, I've got a lot of scripture, but uh, over the next, anyway, couple of weeks, we're going to deal about these extraterrestrial beings that have been seen and that have been uh, uh, probably, I think, uh, the, some of the information I got back in the 1870s uh, was the first counts that they had actually written down, uh, that they had seen something from another world. But um, tonight we're going to start in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, and in the 36th verse, and we're going to take the scripture, and we're going to let the scripture talk for us. Matthew 24, 36. But in, the, in that day and that hour knoweth no man, but not the angels of heaven, but my Father alone. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now that's an account given to us by the Lord himself, and if you will, prophecy of what we can expect and understand in the last days. Now, if we live in the last days, which we do, then we must understand and we can go to the Scripture, we can go to the Bible and begin to look at what were the days like prior to Noah's and the flood coming to this earth. And by doing that, we're going to be able to get a good idea of exactly what is taking place here on this earth. We're going to have to, we're going to, we're going to examine uh, here in a while about the Great Pyramid and the Great Pyramids, actually. They call the one the Great Pyramid that's set. But we're going to, we're going to investigate and we're going to be, we're going to begin to see if and how and how could it have been that such an intelligence could have come to such a prehistoric time that these men that were on this earth know all that they know at that time, of which we can't equal today, by the way. With all the things that we know, with our computer age, with all of our intelligence, we still cannot equal what they were doing back at, during that time and that age. Let's go to Isaiah, the 40th chapter. So as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. The book of Isaiah gives us a grand account of the prophet as to the days that, of Christ himself coming. And that's even up into the time of him coming back again. Now, in the 40th chapter and the 21st verse, it says this. Well, I better get over there first. 40, 21. 
Have you not known, have you not heard that it not being told you from the beginning, ye have not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and in the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away uh, as stubble. To whom then will we liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, and bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. For, he, for that he is a strong power, not one faileth. Now, you'll notice the scripture that I gave you that indicates that he sitteth, he sitteth, and I believe that was in the 22nd verse, sitteth upon the circle of the earth. He sitteth upon the circle of the earth. We know that God is a spirit. The Bible is very explicit about that. In fact, the Lord says that those that are going to worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And we also understand that, bless God, that there is a heaven in which he evidently lives. There is, a, there is heaven that evidently that Christ, the Messiah, his son, now sits at his right-hand side, poised, waiting to come back. For this generation and this time, as he promised when he uh, descended off this or ascended off this earth, uh, descended off this earth, that uh, he would come back again. So we are constantly looking into the heavens. We are looking. We are looking up. Look up for your redemption is nigh unto thee. The Bible teaches us. So we are. We are constantly expecting the help and the redemption of this day and this age to come from the heavens itself. Now, of course, the heavens, and and while I'm uh, speaking, turn with me to the book of of, uh, Psalms, the 19th chapter. The heavens have produced many things, and there's been many signs and wonders that will come from the heavens, that have come from the heavens, and we are, are now preparing ourselves probably for the greatest onslaught of spiritual awareness from the heavens that this earth has ever known. Now, we know that the time in which the powers of darkness have on the face of this earth are shortened. We also know that, bless God, because they are shortened, God is going to permit Satan and his cohorts to do that which they do, and that's evil. And the biggest thing that you must remember in all this, that Satan is the father of all lies. Do you remember me telling you that, and for years some of you have heard me say, that you are going to have to know the Lord God by the Spirit. That it's not going to be in a church. It's not going to be because, because you happened to decide that you were going to believe Him because uh, uh, you went to this certain meeting. You're going to have to know the Lord for yourself. You're going to have to know who He is. You're going to be challenged, brothers and sisters, in this generation and this time. And the challenge is going to mean your very eternal life if you make the wrong, if you make the wrong judgment within that, within that uh, answer that you're going to have to give, if this be the Lord, if this be the Lord, who is the Lord? Now, again, he's not going to come, and unfortunately, he's not going to come. It's the picture that hangs in so many uh, offices and so many church buildings on the face of this earth uh, of a, that portrays Christ. Now, he's not going to look like that. And there's no reason for you and I to think that he is. I think one of the one of the grand things that he did was when he returned again in his glorified body, he did not look the same, did he? He didn't. Did they know him? Uh-uh, they didn't. What does that tell us? We're going to have to know him. More so, see, they knew him by the flesh and learned to know him by the spirit. When the Holy Ghost came, they learned to know Christ by the Spirit. Before then, they only could know Him by the flesh. The problem that we have in this generation and time, most of the church, definitely none of the church know Him by the flesh. Few know Him by the Spirit. And that's where the greatest challenge is going to be to the church world in this day and this hour. The very first verse of the 19th chapter a Psalm says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. So again, it's the heavens. It's the heavens that points to, turns to where God's at, where, where it seems like that we await 
this glorious time when he and, and, and 10,000 upon 10,000 of those that will come with him. But you and I need to realize and understand that that time of waiting, that time of being is going to be challenged greatly. What you have to understand and I have to understand about all of this, I think to get anything really out of it, the depth in which God wants us to get out of it is very, is very simply this, that the whole course of Satan was to absolutely to contaminate the holy seed of God. That's what it was all about. Adam came, and because Adam fell and the fall came in the garden, God had to send what Christ even says of himself as being the second Adam. He come. Now, when we understand and realize that the powers of darkness are out to deceive, they're out to steal, to kill, and destroy, they are out to get us to believe a lie. And we must understand that. Because that is what they do, that's what they have done, and that's foremost what they're going to do on the face of this earth during this time and this hour. Look in Joel, the, the, the second chapter of Joel, and the 30th verse. Joel chapter 2, verse 30. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Now there again he refers to the heavens. And that word shoes simply means to display. He said, I will display wonders in the heavens. Wonders in the heavens. Now, 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 I realize that we can go about a lot of things and we can speak in, in a lot of directions. A lot of scientific knowledge is being gathered. It's, it's very knowledgeable now that sometime uh, in the year t after 2000, whatever it is, that there's a meteor that's headed us away that the, the science world is trying to figure out what they're going to do about it because it's on a direct path to the earth. And we're trying to decide if we're going to use a nuclear power, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, to, you know, to try to bust that thing up and to change the direction. Is that, going to, is that also a wonder from heaven? Of course it is. But you realize that we also deal with principalities and powers of darkness, those great powers in the air of which we can't see. And that power is also part of the wonders that are in heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Of course, it goes on to explain the rest of, of what he has to say there, but I don't want to get into that tonight. I want you to go into the book of Luke, the 21st chapter. Book of Luke 21. When we begin to think about, could it be possible that there could be any such thing as aliens from another planet? Well, I think myself personally that it would be silly to believe that out of all that God has created, the universe upon universe, past this solar system, now we're beginning to realize that more and more through the Hubble telescope that was put up, that there must be somewhere out in all that vastness of the solar space, another place that would be able to be inhabited by life form. Uh, I don't believe that there would be any reason to think that God would have probably only have created this earth for just the people that could go on it, especially as small as this is in comparison to some of the other planets that are in the solar system, even our solar system. In, in uh, uh, Luke 21, the 10th verse, two verses there. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, famines, pestilence, fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Now we have gone through this, and I have preached extensively uh, within this in the end time message that I often do preach. But again, I want you to focus in on the, the fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Now, they're fearful sights. Now, do fearful sights come from God? Well, they could, because God is all good and God is all evil and God is able to do anything that he wants to do at any point in given time. But God also permits, and what we need to understand as the church, that God is going to permit a great onslaught of darkness to come to this earth. We have not seen, people think, oh, just oh, hell's just going on. Honey, hell hadn't even started to go on yet. The church does not even, even begin to understand what is going on. We have been being set up for this thing for generations. And you have to understand that. In the year 1984, I was getting ready to have a, a crusade in a, in a small town. 
And I was in a in a, a, a town about oh, about the size of Mount Carmel, I guess. And I was I was putting out posters to to invite people to the crusade. And and as I walked by and and I went into the Hardy's restaurant and I came out and and they had posted my poster on their bulletin board. And when I came out, I walked by and I looked up and there was this furry, cute looking thing that was hideous, but it was cute. And it happened to be when this thing, the gremlins, had just come out. And the movie was big, and they were making all these millions of dollars. And, and I didn't think anything about it. I looked at it, and I thought, huh? And I started to walk away. And about that time, the Spirit of God came upon me. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, what do you see with that? And I said, well, I said, I, I, I see a, 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 no doubt something not of this world. And I said, it's kind of hideous, but I said, they've made it look awful nice and awful cute. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, and this is the device in which Satan is going to use in the last day to get your children, your grandchildren, to be able to accept the hideous as being all right. And he went on to say something even further to me. He said, this all began back with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. Now think about that for a minute. He said it goes back further than just this. He said it goes back to, to believing in things that are not and accepting them. Now, for a number of years, I, I spoke about that, that God gave to me. And then a few years back when this thing came up about the, about the uh, UFOs and the, thing, the vision that God gave me that, then I incorporated that into that and said, well, that was all part of exactly what it was that, that, that God was leading up to to show me that was going to take place, and it was, and it still is today. But with all, with all understanding of which we'll never have until that day, we have to begin to realize that there was something that was going on. See, darkness never comes on like a, like a, like, like a roaring lion come flying through the door. Somehow or other, we have mistaken in the church spiritual warfare to believe that it comes on like that. No, it comes very subtly. Darkness is a subtle thing. You didn't begin, you didn't fall into sin the first time you fell into a sin that you may even be fighting today. Your, your spirit man rebelled against that sin. But then after you kind of got accustomed to it and your conscience began to be seared with that sin, it got to be easier, didn't it? The same thing with darkness, the same thing that I've tried to part, part, point out about the church that it's been so long since the power of the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God has been prevalent within the church services of, of the church, especially here in America, that we don't know what real church is about anymore. We don't know what the church of Acts is all about anymore in our church services because we go through the motions of religion, but we don't see the power and the devastation of God's power against darkness. We don't see that anymore. So therefore, the stage is set. The church has gone to sleep. The church has accepted religion as being the way to go to heaven. They accepted the fact that, well, you know, if you're sick, you just die. Or if God gets around to it, He might heal you. They believe in healing. They believe in miracles. They believe in this. They believe in that. Never see any of it happen to any extent. So why not? Now the church is in position. Now, did the church get in that position overnight? No. No, they didn't. It took years to bring the church to the place where the church will receive the one world church system. And that's where the church is headed. Now the church doesn't want to believe that the church is headed in that place, but that's where the church is headed. The church is headed to receive a one world church system, which is going to be implemented partly by this showing up and revealing of themselves, these supernatural, extraterrestrial beings, whatever you want to call them, UFOs, spacemen, whatever you want to deem them to be, and they're going to make a speech that is going to rattle this earth to the very foundation of the very core of Christ himself. And when that's all over and everybody says, oh, well, yeah, well, well we have to believe that because, I mean, this came from outer space, and, and I mean, they, they came from God. These are angels. But I'm here to tell you, not everything glitters is gold. Amen? But I'm also here to tell you that most of the church will be sucked in during that time. Most of it will be taken in. So when I uh, begin to realize, back in, at least in 1984 anyway, that the church was in for some real deception along with the rest of the people. What do you do about that? 
You blow the horn in Zion. You, you begin to speak. You see, God has always told the prophets, and when I tell you, if you speak not, the blood's upon you. But if you speak and they hear, then it's their decision. If they don't uh, hear into what I have spoken through the prophets, then, 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 then bless God, then it's up to them to pay the price. But the prophet will not be accountable for that. So I've always been quick to speak what God has told me. Because I know through speaking it, it's off of my shoulders. It's out of my hands. And it, it, then it becomes, if you will, right between your eyes. And you have to do whatever it is that God would have you do or whatever you think you should do. It's probably better than that. And then it goes from that place to the next place to the next place to the next place. Now, we understand there's going to be fearful sights and great signs. Let's go to Acts 11. I'm sorry, Acts 1. The 11th verse. Just had it backwards. Acts 1, 11. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, which stand ye gazing up into heaven, this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So again, our eyes are upon heaven, and that's, what, that's exactly what that's all about, is to get you to understand, and it's the truth, that our eyes are upon heaven. Now, Again, if we're going to be looking under the heavens, what better way is the powers of darkness going to have to deceive us through coming out of the heavens? All right? We know Christ is going to come out, come down as he went up, look to the heavens because he's going to come down. So you and I are going to be looking to the heavens. So is the rest of the church and the world too. They don't know that yet, but they are. And so here we have the scenario all set. And here comes these beings calling themselves coming from God, and they're going to give us the story, and we're going to take it hook, line, and sinker for the, for, for the most part. Now, the only problem that Satan has is people like me and you. We're the only, we are the only thing that's stopping him from absolutely taking over and annihilating this earth and absolutely corrupting the holy seed of God himself. We are the only thing that stands in his path. The church doesn't stand in his path. I'm sorry, but they don't. The church wouldn't know him if he came through their door and sat down with them. Because I'll tell you why. Most of us have our minds made up what he should look like, what he should dress like, how he should comb his hair, how he should speak, how, what kind of verses he should use in the Bible, and how forceful or loving or unloving or whatever kindness within his voice would have to be, and that would have to be or not have to be God. And I'm here to tell you, surprised is the church going to be. Because he is not going to come as a preacher. He's not going to come all dressed up as you think a preacher should look to be. He is going to come, brothers and sisters, as the Son of Almighty God himself. And you and I are going to have to understand how to receive whether it be him or it be the father of all lies lying to us. Now, in Genesis, the sixth chapter, we need to go back now and begin to investigate the days of Noah just prior to the, to the flood. I have studied this for a number of years, the sixth chapter of Genesis, And I believe that as God does all things, or especially with me, they come together in pieces. It's never been an, an overall picture. It's been a piece here, and five years down the road there's another piece, and I go, oh, that piece goes with this piece, and that over there must go with this piece. And that seemingly has been the way that God has dealt with me through the years. Now, this piece I have never really grabbed onto and added it toward what I'm about to teach you over these next few hours. Sixth chapter, first verse. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that were, that they were fair and they took them wise of all which they chose. Now I'm going to skip the third verse here for just, for just a minute and go to the fourth verse. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. 
Now, what happened? Well, we're going to study here in a few minutes and find out that they left their first estate. Okay? These are angels. These are angels that have rebelled against God. If you want to say that they were already fallen angels, you could say that. If you'd want to say that there were angels that just all of a sudden looked down and said, Hey, there's a good-looking babe. I think I'll become flesh, and I think I'll marry her. You can do that. Because the Bible just not, is not very clear about just exactly how that is. And it really makes no difference. The fact of it is, angelic force changed themselves from spirit unto flesh, came down on this earth and married and produced children that were hideous giants. And that's what happened. He said, well, how, 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 how could this be? Well, it could be very simple. Angels, and we have many accounts in the Bible where angels came and manifested themselves as men, flesh and blood. We're going to read an account, maybe two or three accounts, depending on what the Lord will have me do here this evening with that. So you can begin to understand that that is everyday common practice with angels. Dark, of the dark side or the light side, of Satan or of God himself. They manifest themselves into the flesh world as flesh and blood. Now, many people have real problems with that, and probably many people have many problems with, 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 this, with this, uh, these sermons that I'm doing here in the next week or two. But you need to keep in mind and understand the prime purpose in which this took place. The purpose for this to take place was to corrupt the holy seed of God. That's exactly what, what was going on. If, in fact, that they could do this and they did it, then what did they have? They did not have... Men and women, actually children, if you will, boys and girls, being produced by an earthly mother and an earthly father like the Lord thy God had absolutely commanded that it be so. We now had something altogether different that had taken place. We had produced giants. Now these giants were, were they said, nine cubits tall. Now a cubit is, is from your elbow to your fingers and, and, and 18, about 20 inches but if you look at it at being a foot and a half, you understand that you uh, take half of that, that nine, you're going to find out they're about 13 and a half, 14 feet tall. Now, folks, that's tall. That is taller than any of our basketball stars, right? They could instantly take over the NBA. And there wouldn't take that many of them. Let me tell you what, there wouldn't take that many of them. Because they were five and a half cubits wide. These weren't little people. These people were absolutely not of this world. But they had been able to reproduce and they were able to bring on a seed that was not of God. A seed in which God had never planned for this earth to inhabit this earth to praise Him. And, and I'm going to tell you something, and, and you, can, you can bear witness to this, because we know one of the sons of Anak, Goliath, he was a vicious man, a mean man. Because he was what? A Canaanite. And we're going to get into that, and, and I'm going to show you why God told Joshua to destroy the entire nation of, of Canaan. To kill ever, ever man, woman, child, ever beast, everything they had to burn it and to destroy it. Because God knew that his holy seed could not be corrupted on this earth and all turn out like God had to have it turn out. So we now have in place giants walking around where the angels have come to this earth, have become men, have taken wives and produced these not normal by any means children. And I guess if you think that they were uh, uh, normal, then you would have to uh, tell me where you've seen such a thing as that before. And by the way, there has been, through the ages, documentation that have been made that have found skeletons that are, these, that are, are this size. So there was no doubt at all the fact that there had to have been men, there had to have been people of this kind of, uh, of, this kind of size, this kind of countenance. Now, Let's talk for a minute about Noah and, and Noah's family. Now, you know, Noah was uh, quite a man. 
we find that Noah was a just man and walked upright before God. Now, most of us believe that Noah was saved. Most of the church believes that Noah was saved because Noah was right with God, and he was. But I want you to listen to why. What was the reason he was just before God? Now you say, well, well, he must have been a pretty good Christian type of a person. Well, I don't doubt that he wasn't that. But the fact of it is, if in fact Noah's family had been contaminated by these angels that had become flesh, that had entered into the, the fleshly women, married them and, and, and reproduced children, Noah, and listen closely, Noah and his family would have also been destroyed in that flood as God destroyed everything else. Because God had to wipe that seed he had to get it off the face of this earth. Now, what would have God done? He would have once again produced what we would have known as the second Adam, which wouldn't have been Christ, and Christ would end up probably being the third Adam. Because, you see, God's plan was not going to be, uh, if you will, upstaged. God intended and still intends to implement, to carry out, exactly that which he said he was going to do. When God said, let there be light, there was light. God said there would come a generation, there's going to come a time on the face of this earth when the days are going to be like that unto Noah's day. Now, now, now what we do with this, and, and, and which is, 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 to turn back with me, if you will, in 24 of Matthew, so you can get a hold of this. What we do with this often, and I've done it many times myself as a minister, we look very, very closely, and we... You look down into that 38th verse. Now, I'm in 24, 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark. Now, most of the time, what we say, well, it's business as usual. And that's what I've preached and taught for years. And it will be that way for the world's sight. But it's also further than that. And the deepness to that and the depth goes all the way, goes all the way down into this time, into this place, when these spirit beings, these extraterrestrials, if you will, came down and became men. And, and you say, well, that's quite an act, isn't it? Well, let me tell you something. I don't know that I've ever, ever probably uh, uh, said anything or anything much in the way from the pulpit about it. You see, the, the difference between the angelic force and you and I, there's a number of differences, but one of them is this that they can transform themselves from the spirit world into the flesh world. You and I have the same type of spirit of which they are. In fact, we're made in the very image of God and have that spirit. But we are locked and we are bound to these bodies until that day comes through death that we release or we are released to be of that spirit world. And then you will be like unto that. But until that time, God chose it. See, the laws of God are absolute. And God chose an absolute law to take the spirit, place it into a clayven body, and cause it to live. As he breathed breath upon that clay, it lived, the Bible says. And because he did that and chose that, because he wanted man to be able to commune with him. And he set us here to do that. And after that point in time of communing with God is over, you give up the ghost, you die, then you once again become that which you were in the beginning, spirit. So the, there isn't, the only difference we have going on here is that they can become flesh, but as of yet we can't become spirit. Somebody say you understand that, so maybe we can... We can go on a little bit further with this thing. You say, well, you know, this does sound a little bit, little bit like Steven Spielberg's thing. Well, hang on, it's going to get better. <laughs> we are at a time when we're going to have to understand that there has been a plan. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. And I'm not trying to tell you this because I believe that I'm the only minister on the face of this earth that's ever ministered anything like this because I know that I'm not. But let me tell you something I do know. This message was not ministered in Paul's day, nor Peter's day. Why wasn't it? Because of the fact that it wasn't time for God to begin to go back into. Now, there's hints of it, and we, hopefully I can give you, show you some of that in the New Testament. There's a number of hints about this that I'm preaching to you about how, in fact, that they came 
and they inhabited this earth at one point in time, and then they were what? Then God destroyed them off this earth. Well, most of them, which he did. Let's, uh, let's go to Numbers, the 13th chapter. I want to show you something in the book of Numbers. Numbers 13... I see, 25. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. Now, this is Moses sent them into the land. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation, the children of Israel, into the wilderness of Paran and to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Now, remember, God said, that there's the land. I want you to go in and take it. And it was the, we, we know it to be the Canaan land. And they, uh, they came back with the fruit in the land, and they told him, they said, We come into the land whither thou settest, sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Now, we understand, again, that about somewhat about the, the, the sons of Anak, the children of Anak as being giants, but it says the, the Malachites dwelt in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites, the Armrites, dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of the Jordan. Now, understand something. All of these had giants in the land. If you have to, now if you need to go back up and we need to point that out, because what he's saying, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and every great, and moreover we saw the children of Anak there. Okay, they saw the descendants of Anak, and then they go on, and Caleb stilled the people and before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. And, of course, we know that they didn't. We know that they, they, they absolutely uh, rebelled, and they were afraid, and, and, and that was the end of all of it. And, and so the 33rd verse says, And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in their own sight as grasshoppers, so we were in their sight. And no doubt in the next verse, in the 14th chapter, talks about how that the children of Israel wept and cried all night because they were afraid. Their flesh beat them out, beat them out of what uh, God wanted them to have. Now, the sightings that we have had, the sightings that we have had, have been sightings that I think they uh, collected somewhere around 70,000 what they believe that are sightings that they have to accept that are set into computers here in the States today of UFO sightings. Now, 70,000 is too many to believe that there's not something going on. And down in Australia, they've got 80,000 on their computer of sightings of pictures and, and, and movie, home movie uh, photos. Uh, Jimmy Carter, even one of our presidents, even claimed that he had seen and even made out a report of seeing a UFO. So it, it, it started out being if you said that you saw one, then, you know, everybody looked at you and thought, well, you know. And a lot of people have never talked about the seeing anything and never having anything happen, and others have, have been ridiculed, and some have been talked about being taken on board of these, these vessels and, and being examined and this happening and that happening. And I don't have any problem at all with these things. Because why? Because I'm here to tell you that the angelic force left their first estate and became men and produced children. All right? And none of us know or understand how that that may have happened within or without of the spirit realm involved in all that, which makes no difference. The fact is, is what it was were produced. They produced something that was superhuman. It's not human to be 14 feet tall. Some of these people that are 7 foot and 7 foot 4 think that's not human. How would they like to be twice that tall? It's not human to be that tall. It's not human to be that wide. I don't know how you'd even get them in a place like this. They'd have to get down and crawl. Get a come along and suck them in. I don't know. I'm... <laughs> Being an old boiler maker, that's the way I'd solve it, but... Of course, we put a harness around them. We wouldn't want them to, wouldn't want to injure them. But you see, the giants were there, and they were in the land. But I, I, I said that 
in all of the things that you have heard throughout the, the years about the, the UFOs. And I, I, would, I would deem it a real pleasure to have one land in my backyard. And the reason I deem it a pleasure is because I would walk right out there and rebuke that thing in the name of Jesus Christ because I'm going to tell you where the whole thing's still at, folks. It's still at and within the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. It still is. If that thing be of God, that rebuking that you would do <laughs> wouldn't be anything done. But if that thing's not a God, that thing will bow down, back off, and fly away. Be the end of that. Amen? Amen. But the problem, the problem, the problem that's going to be with this is how many people is going to think to do that? Tonight when you go home, if one of these things comes in your backyard, I mean, are you going to run out there and say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ, you foul, stinking spirit of hell? Be gone! You're going to go, what is that? You say you're from God? I believe it. And that's pretty well what's going to happen with most, uh, not only the church, but the, wor the world. The world's going to get sucked all the way into it. They already have been. I mean, we, we have got, you know, there's been pictures, there's been sightings, there's been conversations, and, and these, these alien beings are already saying that they, they have come, and their whole thing is the earth is overpopulating, and they're going to teach us how to be transported up into their ships, and they've got thousands upon thousands of these ships waiting out somewhere in outer space that's going to come and take us to another planet where we can survive. Boy, that's a plan, isn't it? Somebody call that the rapture, will you? It wouldn't surprise me they don't try to sell the church the fact that this is the rapture. Beam me up, Scotty, is the only thing I can think of. It's going to be a wild time. For those people that don't understand, it's going to be worse than that, I'm afraid. But the fact of it is that, that, that God has got this set, and he's got it set into place. And when God sets something into place... God's got a purpose for this. Because the powers of darkness, because the time is short, they're going to have to make the last run, if you will, against God's holy people. They're going to have to do whatever they can do and in all that they can do it in order to destroy the holy seed of God. And if they can get that done, if they can get that done, then i got news for you. When the Lord Jesus comes, there ain't nobody going to be here to receive him. Did you hear what I said? Because doesn't the Bible say, say that they'll say, lo, here is Christ, and lo, there is Christ? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, folks, who are we going to choose? Because, the, as I said, the deception is not going to come through somebody standing up in the church or out here in the world and trying to convince you that, that Allah is God or, or the Hindu God is God. Or, or That's not going to be it. We can't even convince them that Jesus is God. That's not going to come that way. The way the deception is going to come is going to have to be in such a massive way that it is going to deceive the whole earth. Isn't that exactly what it says in the book of Revelation when the Lord is speaking? He said, and Satan cometh and deceiveth the whole world. You say, well, he, he, you know, well, then you also can look also and find out that save the very elect. The very elect. Who are the very elect? I'm going to tell you who the very elect are. They're tongue-talking Christians that fast and pray and seek the face of God and know His voice. That's who they are. And I'm going to tell you what else. That leaves out about 90% of the church. And that's what's sorry, isn't it? People want to think that they believe. People want to believe that they believe. But I'm here to tell you that the church has come to a point where God has given us all the knowledge, all the way from Adam, all the way to the present-day church, and we still don't know him? That is sad, isn't it? And it could get sadder, I'm afraid. The book of Psalms, 115. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing one of those things land in the backyard. But I'm going to tell you something else I know. I think they're smart enough to stay away from people like us. I'm serious. I mean, I would go in your next, uh, the next door neighbor's backyard if one gets that close. Don't misunderstand me. They're not going to have to just come to my backyard. I mean, I'll visit. I'll be glad to go down to Brock or around a you know street or whatever. Because I'm going to tell you what I, I I believe I believe what I've got on the inside of me is greater than what they are. I believe that. 
And if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be standing here telling you that tonight. Because what I'm doing is telling you or forewarning you about something that is taking place in the supernatural realm that is going to manifest itself into the natural realm again. Because as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in this day. And those sons of God will come once again down and manifest themselves in flesh. And they will have intercourse with our women and there will be produced hideous giants again. You say, is it going to all happen like that overnight? Uh-uh. I want you to go back and go back and think, and if you can, in your days of going to school, some of you are still in school, maybe you're taking the courses now, and it'll be easier to remember. But what was the average height of man? What was the average height of man? Not very tall, four foot, four foot two. And through the time that we have evolved, we have seemingly gotten taller to the place today. And, and now stop and think about that. 20 years ago, you couldn't find a 7-foot basketball player. Today, if your team doesn't have a 7-foot basketball player, you ain't going to win. What am I saying? I'm telling you that it has evolved. Do you think that the sons of God have come down and, and become flesh and have taken women and done that too already? I don't doubt that they haven't. But I don't think that we have seen all there is. Now, now I want you also to, to realize something. Have we not? And, of course, I realize that this could be a, a turn of evolution within this, this world system itself. But have we not grown, uh, waxed worse and worse as time has gone on? See, evil is, is, is hideous. Isn't there all kind of evil going on this earth? I mean, you stop and think about it. A mother that would take her two children, lock them in a car, and push the car off in a lake. Are you going to tell me that you think that that came out of, came out of, out of being brought up as some normal whatever, and you say, well, yeah, that's one case. No, that's one case in hundreds of thousands of cases. People are sick. And thank God none of us are that part of that. Amen. But they're sick because they, 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 they do what seemingly seems to be right, that it's what? That it's hideous. It's wicked. And that's what darkness is. Now, 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 let's stop and think about that for just a minute. Now, these UFO people come, come around, and we'll call them UFO or extraterrestrials, whatever, however you want to deem this. And they come around trying to tell us that they come to do us good, right? But there's too many accounts that have been made of this thing that didn't turn out in being good. Too many accounts where these people have been taken on the board of these UFOs or so they said they have been, most of which have never known that they were there, except they had ended up having ulcers and they ended up having committing suicide and ended up all types of things happened to them. And, and, and some of them they got to and began to through a means of also darkness, hypnosis, being able to, 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 to find out where they were at. There's one woman and man had... A, a, a couple, two or three hours that elapsed that they couldn't count for when all these came down in front of them. And through hypnosis, they found out, and they both told the same story separately at, at, at almost at the same time in two separate rooms of two different hypnoses. And it come down to find out that this woman drew a map uh, of a galaxy. Now, this happened some 20 years ago. The galaxy in which he drew this map about, they took the thing and they got it to the proper authorities and they looked it all over that would know about such matters as this and there wasn't anything like that. Now guess what since the Hubble Space uh, Probe Telescope's been up there? The same doctor of science that investigated this or this woman, when they found a new galaxy, he thought about that woman, he went and drew out all this stuff and guess what? That was the galaxy. You said, well, then this thing could be real. It's more than could be real, folks. It's real. It's being hid from us. I believe our government has known about this for years and years and years. I believe they've been in contact with our government, as a matter of fact, as well as the other governments of this world. As I said, the governments of this world have a plan for this world. And I'm going to tell you something. You and I don't fit the plan. You hear what I'm telling you? And part of them bringing the one world uh, uh, order into, into existence, in, well, it's already in existence, but to the, the present place of which they want, or to the place that they're going to bring it out of the present place is that, is going to be all the way dictated to the way that they control and handle this thing. And they're going to control and handle it. I mean, it's, they're being, uh, obviously there's a higher power dictating to them. Now, did we find 115? If you did, look in the 16th verse. Did I read that? The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. 
The earth has been given to the children of men. Not to the angels. Not to the angelic force. Been given to the children of men. Now, that, that, that doesn't mean, again, a, an angelic force, an angel, that has become, if you will, that has become a flesh. That doesn't mean that. It means uh, a man and woman created by God, uh, as flesh and blood, that would come together through holy matrimony, marry, pro married, producing children. Go back to Genesis, the sixth chapter. Now, one more time. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wise of all which they chose. Now, notice they didn't inhibit themselves to one wife. All that they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be, shall be a hundred and twenty years. So he get that in there. But the fourth verse says, There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown, which we uh, have talked to you about, uh, the sons of Anak, Goliath, uh, the giants, the sizes of which they were, and this is exactly what they were reduced of. Now, the sons of God in the Old Testament, and it's never used as humans when you, when you get into the, the Hebrew word for that, but it's always supernatural beings, that are higher than man, but lower than God himself. So it has to be the angelic force. And I want you to be sure, if you didn't take note of that, to, to take some note of that. Now, in the book of Jude, if you will, the book of Jude, and if when we find, and these things come to pass, and they will, I realize there's going to be a lot of surprised people, but they'll, they'll get over it. Uh, the book of Jude, 6th and 7th verse. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Now, what was their own habitation? The spirit world. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm sorry. I, did I say five? I, yeah, six and seven. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, notice that after strange flesh. What, is that, what does that indicate? It indicates, again, that these were, this was not of the seed in which God intended for it to be, but strange. It was part of this hideous thing that happened, that when the angels left their first estate, which is heaven itself, and they and and left their own habitation, which was their them a spirit, and become men. But he is, tells us here that they have been reserved; they have been reserved into darkness. So we know that they they have been chained. But now not all of them was chained, and I'm going to show you that in in a while. But I want you to go to Second Peter now, and I want to give you the let's see Second Peter two four. And it says here. It says, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom they uh, away the truth shall be evil spoken of. Now, when you begin to realize that many of those people begin to accept this as being a way of life. Now, if you can imagine the size that you and I are, and in walks this old boy 14 foot tall, and he says, I think I'll eat that cow out there in the field tonight. And it's your cow, you're going to let him have it, right? And you begin to accept this as being a way of life. And that's, again, when you, when, we, when you look at the way that the morality of this nation and this world has gone, it has become a way of life to us. We are accepting this. It's just like the hideous things. When you go back and begin to look, what about, does anybody remember the, the movie that came out, what am I going to say, in the 70s, uh, Rosemary's Baby? You remember that how that how that she was was Satan himself was supposed to impregnated her and produce this this unholy child or this child of evil, 
See, I believe that all of these things, and I don't believe that, that, that somebody, that, that the powers of darkness or Satan went in and said to, to, to whoever, and I don't know who produced or who uh, wrote that uh, particular movie, but I don't think he went in and said, hey, Doc, I want you to do it this way. I believe he entered in through the sin that was in their lives, and they begin to give place, and these thoughts come. You know, we, we don't give an, enough understanding within our carnal minds to how the powers of, of, of darkness or the powers of light, either one, truly operate in the supernatural world. It has to operate in and through your mind. Your mind is the greatest playground that the powers of darkness will ever have. And when you begin to give place, then they can feed you all types of things to get you to believe things that are contrary to what things that will be truth to such a degree that you can justify and have justification in murder and everything else that you might do. And that's the way that works. So I believe that through the mind realm that these types of things came out. Now, and I also can, can remember uh, being such hideous space movies with these terrible looking monsters i mean they'd show the pictures and i couldn't i i thought i can't imagine letting some little kid watch something like this i wonder you know it give people like me nightmares to, to watch something like that but you see it again it is planning into your mind and getting you to begin to to accept the fact that hey now there it is and we say yeah that looks something like all this and that's all part of the plan or the scheme that it was laid uh, many, many eons ago by the powers of darkness to move into and to begin to corrupt and take over this world. Because you see, if you'll remember, the Lord God, after he kicked Satan and all of those angels that, that rebelled against him, against God, out of heaven, he said, if you, want, if you want a kingdom, he said, that earth will be your kingdom. He gave the powers of darkness, gave Satan this earth. Now, now, being on this earth, the difference within this is very simple. Being on this earth, we're here, and we are not subject to his rulership. Why? Because of Christ that's in us. That gives us a superiority over him. The rest of the world, God helped them because they are going to bow down and they're going to succumb to the powers of darkness in every way which, uh, and form in which the powers of darkness you know, want to move. And you can see that. And as I've often said, the sad part of all this is that it's infiltrated the church. And we have too much of it into the church today. Because we have, instead of leaving our standards up where they should be as children of God, the most holy God, what we have done, we have brought our standards down and want to look too much like the world looks. And in, in, in doing that, what we have done, we have brought the world into the church. And because the power of God's anointing isn't present as it once was in our services, now we begin to do what? Just the same thing. We begin to accept the fact. We begin to accept the fact that this goes on in the church. Well, as I said a long time ago, the preaching against sin is not a popular thing today. Uh, preachers that preach against sin today will never draw and have big crowds because there's too many churches you can go to and live in your sin and then condone it. You hear what I'm telling you? And, and, and it's a shame, but you see, it, the whole, I, I, you know, I, I believe most of the blood is going to be on the, on the, on the ministry of what's about to take place anyway, that has taken place. Because I don't believe we've done our jobs. I don't believe that we have, we have backed the church, meaning you as parishioners, against the wall far enough to get you to understand there's a heaven and there's a hell. Unless you become holy as the Lord God is holy, you're going to burn in hell. This whole thing, I went to the altar and I bawled and squalled, and I'm going to heaven, and I'm going out here and live like the devil, and I'm going to get there. That you, ought to, you ought to make a movie out of that. Because that's as big a lie as some of these other things that goes on, okay? Because that's not, that's not at all the way in which this thing is going gonna, is gonna to come down and the way this thing is going to work. Well, I'm, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to close down uh, with that tonight. And uh, uh, next week I'll, I'll go on and finish this. I, 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 next week, let me tell you, I'm gonna, as I said, I want to get into the pyramids. I want to get into some, uh, some of this stuff that was taking place back in the prehistoric times when, when there was no way that man could have had the knowledge to have been able to have produced this thing. I mean, that, that, the Great Pyramid that is set, set there in Egypt, that thing is built so perfectly. And it is such a sight. In fact, the, 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 the thing that I read said that all this millions of ton of stone that sat there for all these years, and that thing has not sank. You think because it has not one, one meter of an inch, one meter of an inch, one meter, hasn't even budged. 
Now, you, I'm going to tell you something. Now, it, it, and you want to listen real, that ain't now normal. Okay? That's just not normal. I mean, that just doesn't happen that way. And, and we're going to investigate that, and, and uh, hopefully I can.